and everybody. Last week I was talking about rhythm and how very important it is that we get our students to count aloud and that that led me, led me into this idea that we can't do the counting for them all the time because that never um, develops their independence and importantly rhythmically it never develop, helps them to develop that inner sense of controlling the pulse and knowing how to position the rhythm within that. And that got, that got me into this idea of being a lazy piano teacher again. So I thought I'd come back to that topic today. And I've done quite a bit of research in the, in the past into being a lazy piano teacher. So today, you know, the idea is that students will learn more when you are lazy. By lazy, I mean effective. Okay, so I don't mean sit back and put your feet up and have a coffee. Um, so let me give you three different questions in a moment that you can ask yourself to find out how effective you are as a piano teacher. Lazy is a bit more of a headline or grabber, isn't it? But it's not my idea, I have to say. I picked this up quite a, quite a few years ago now from the Lazy Teacher's Handbook, and I will share that link with you below. But the Lazy Teacher's Handbook is by a chap called Jim Smith. And um, just to quote from, from the book, he says, when you become a lazy teacher, you will employ a range of strategies that put the responsibility of learning directly and consistently onto the students and so that they want to engage with their own learning. Now, that's exactly what I want my students to do. I want them to take responsibility for their own learning. But if I'm constantly feeding them stuff in the lesson, then they never have to do a thing. And I'm the one who ends up exhausted at the end of the day because I've been feeding them so much stuff. So here's three questions to ask yourself this week to help you work out how lazy, aka effective, you are in your piano teaching. So the first question is about talking. Do you do all the talking? Is it a monologue from you to the student or is it much more of a dialogue? Now it might depend on the student and it might depend on their age and things like that. But generally speaking, it should be much more of a dialogue that you have with your students. Yes, even with the youngest ones. Or you might find that some of the talking is reduced if you turn to playing the piano more. So that's your first question really. Is the talking that goes on in the lesson, is it a dialogue or is it a monologue? Who does the majority of the talking? I know from having watched many lessons, we teachers tend to feel that we have to be doing all the talking. Not quite the case though. So that's the first question. The second question is, what type of questions do you ask? Are they open questions that invite considered and maybe lengthy responses from your student? Or are they closed questions that require a yes or a no or a straightforward answer? What's the key signature of G major, F sharp? Now that could be the end of it, or you could go on and say, and what else can you tell me about G major? I'm going to come back over the next few weeks and, and look at these, uh, these points in more detail. So I don't want to get into them at the moment. But what kind of questions do you ask? Are they open questions? Are they closed questions? Do you ever ask metacognitive questions, for example? That's your second point. And your third point, really, to work out what kind of teacher you are, is about goal setting and planning. Now, um, do you help your students to set goals? Do you set long-term goals? And do you set weekly shorter term goals? And if you can set goals, help your students to set goals each week, just small, small little ones, then they start to take charge of their own learning. So I've got some students this afternoon and last week we were setting goals. So one student has got a goal of to be able to play through, skip to my loo, confidently with a steady beat, confidently with a steady beat. And I shall get them to give themselves marks out of 10 for that, you know, is it seven out of 10 for having that steady beat? Can they give themselves higher than that? Or is it not so steady? So therefore they'd be more like down on a five. 
student does the learning, they have to think about themselves. So three questions really to get you thinking about how effective, how lazy a teacher you are. Who does the talking? Is it dialogue or monologue? Second question is what kinds of questions do you ask? Yeah, what kinds of questions? And the third question is, do you have a goal or plans that you share with your students so they get to find out where they're going and they share in that excitement of knowing that's where I'm going to next. So thank you for watching. If you are watching, I don't think anybody is so far yet today, but thanks a lot for listening. And I'm going to come back next week and I'm going to look in a little more detail about that idea of dialogue and monologue and how you can make a switch from one to another and why actually it's a very effective way of making sure that the students do the learning. All right, bye-bye for now.